years, my, my choir bought me a trumpet and I promised them I'd learn to play it. Well, this is a better one than they bought for me. My son got me this not so long ago, but it's still iffy when I play. But I'd uh, like, to, like to always make an attempt with the Lord's help. This is redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed out of the blood of the Lamb. evangelist friend of ours from Colorado named Bruce Foster. He, he used to write songs in his sleep, wake up and, and then fill them out and his daughter would write the piano part. And, and uh, one of the songs I thought was so wonderful, I said, you give me a copy of it and we will sing it as long as we can. And we're getting longer all the time singing it. But uh, this is a wonderful song about heaven and uh, it's by Dr. Bruce Foster. We'll sing heaven. Thank you. 
like nobody else is our friend, it's a good thing to know that those that Jesus saves, he says, are his friends. Amen. That he is our friend. This is what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Outside the plastic cover so it doesn't glare. <laughs> it doesn't sound good when I play glare. <laughs> no. What a friend. satisfied my thirsty soul, satisfied it, what was missing in my life. Yes. But uh, this is a song called Water from the Rock, living water that Jesus offered to the woman at the well that was pictured back when Moses struck a rock he was supposed to speak to and God was merciful and brought out water from the rock for the children of Israel, even though Moses had been disobedient and all of them were disobedient. But wonderful picture of the mercy of God. And, uh, you have the duet book. I have the duet book. I'm talking about the back here. I mean, yes. Yes, and I just not. I just want to do the water from the rock. Can I just sing over here now? Because I do my gifts. It's not really nice. Sins he 
their heart, and then I'll be up here preaching, but they're going to come up a couple times during my message to do a couple praise songs. I have a few people already prepared with scripture. We're going to have some people pop up and read some scripture, and we're going to have time for some testimonies tonight, all in the message. Okay, so we got a lot to do, and so uh, we're kind of going to do an interactive service tonight, okay? Not just preacher, but several other moving parts. So they'll sing a song, and then I'll come up here and we'll get in God's Word. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. We, uh, about when God sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house, and a tremendous, tremendous story, not only of salvation in the Lord, but of how the Lord continues to work on us after he saves us. Yeah. And sometimes we don't understand even how the Lord is working. But uh, this is a song by Mina Oglesby, a wonderful song called The Potter's Hands. I, I think in Jeremiah 18, the, the most wonderful line uh, about this potter that finds the pot is marred. Uh, it says, so he made it again. Yeah. Thank you. Another vessel. <laughs> That's wonderful, isn't it? As seemed good to the potter to make it. After we're saved, God does what he sees is best for us. It isn't always the way we see it, but I'm glad to know that truth. And uh, it'll keep my emotions from getting out of line on that subject. But this is the potter's hands. <clears throat> As they fashion 
so glad when Jesus saved me. His grace let me save. Thou canst do what thou wilt with this poor love of clay. We're just clay, and he's the potter. They don't play, oh, but the potter for his hands, the wounded are tender and kind as they pass on a vessel. be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him and were lighted and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Drop down to verse 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word. Yes, sir. For this special time of sacred music that we've enjoyed, it's, it's filled our hearts and our souls tonight. Thank you. Now, Lord, I pray that we pay attention to what you have to say to us through Psalm 34 about praising you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If all people that should praise the Lord ought to be us, yes. ought to be the saved, the born again, right. the right. saints of God. Yes, sir. And uh, we have an opportunity afforded us very soon here to have another Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays of the calendar year. A lot of things surrounding it that I love. And I want to take this song tonight, and I pray that we be challenged by it to be a people of praise. And not just a particular service or we come under the roof of a church or a pie and praise service, but we would have praise on our lips continually for our God. Amen. And uh, give him the glory to his name. Now here David writes these inspired words because David has a satisfied heart. Yeah. Because God has been great in his life and God has been good in his life. Amen. So he writes Psalm 34 to share his feelings that are swelled up within his heart and within his soul and they're outpouring they're overflowing because of the gratefulness that he has for god and i i would ask us as christians as we approach this thanksgiving season do we have a grateful heart amen are we full are we overflowing with the testimony of god's grace and goodness in our life i hope so amen and so David here writes this song, these psalms that he wrote, and this psalm here. And he wants people, the people of God, to join in and praise God. And he solicits, solic, uh, solicits everyone and anyone to try the Lord Amen. and to trust the Lord and to bless his holy name. And he uses the word, verse 8, oh, taste, he says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, yeah. Again, I love Thanksgiving. I love autumn season. I love all the season. I love Michigan. I love Michigan for all the season. But I especially love autumn. How many people love fall, autumn? I, I figured many of you. God bless you. It's one of my favorite times. I, I like so much of it. I love the season. I like the, the, the smells. I love the sights of fall. I, one of my favorite things to do is to take my wife's hand and stroll through a little town and just look at the sights and all the decorations and 
I love the crisp air of the fall season. I, I love the colors that the Lord gives in the trees. I, I love going to a different cider mill every year. This, this year, I had to behave myself. I, the doctor told me to lay off some things, but uh, my wife and I, she went with me one day, and we went out to a cider mill we had never been to before. We enjoyed that little time together, and we, we, we broke bread. We broke one cider donut, and uh, we, 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 you know, we cheered each other, um, and, and, and we had one little cup of cider together, and we enjoyed that, but we, we, like, we did, well, love the fall. I love being with her in this season. Love the family coming in, and, and I know you do the same thing. I like the, the earth tones of fall, the reds and the yellows and the orange and the brown and the tan and the green and the golds and, 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 and such a blue sky it seems some days. I just love the season. It's a season of praise. One of the things I like to do, and I've done it for some years now, I, I love when fall comes and winter because I get into creative cooking. I, I, I'm famous for my soups. Did you know that, Brother Eyes? I'm famous for my soups. I don't do that. But I make soups every every week on my day off. I make a soup, and then I we have some, and then I take it to the neighbor lady and man across the street, sometimes some church folk, somebody's sick. And I just enjoy that. I, I really enjoy that. Chilies and things like that, stews, but mainly. And so what I do is I go in there on Mondays, and I start working. And my wife will be doing what she's doing and maybe in her little office or she's downstairs doing some laundry. And I'll get it going and I'll get it done sometime in the afternoon. And here's what I say to her. I say, huh, take a little taste and see if you like this one. Last week, I knocked it out of the park. I made, I made a, a sweet potato and ham soup. And it was, I think, the best soup I have ever made. And it was just wonderful. And I had it again a couple days later. I just love doing this, but I love to say to my wife, Hunt, here it is. Take a little taste. See if you like this. Tonight, I got this thought. Hey, take a little taste. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and we ought to be sharing our testimony with this world about the goodness of our God. The greatness of our God. Not just at Thanksgiving. But maybe someone's here tonight and you don't know the Lord. Hey, taste for yourself. Amen. The experience of salvation. That's right. We that are saved, taste the goodness of our God. Yeah. Try the Lord in your life and see if you'll not be satisfied. I am. I'm so satisfied. Amen. And David in this psalm, he, he, he's known for his psalms. He's the psalmist. The psalmist of Israel. And he praised his God and we... Love these psalms today. But he challenges us in this psalm. He challenges those. And the first thing I see in this psalm, verse 1, the chorus that swells from a thankful heart. You ought to have a song in your heart. Amen. And it ought to just come out without any trouble. And talk, just think, just think, this, this season of thanks, maybe not tonight, but when you pedal your head, when you go to bed, or tomorrow, or you're approaching Thanksgiving, just think about how good God has been to you. You say, well, I'm having a rough time now. Think about all the other years where there wasn't problems. Amen. That's right. You see, God is worthy of our praise even in the midst of our troubles. Yes. But we often forget about all those wonderful years and experiences and a little bump in the road or a little a sadness in our heart or we have a, a health crisis or a financial setback and we just forget to praise God. He's worthy of all our praise Amen. all the time. Amen. Have a thankful heart. There ought to be a chorus among God's people that swells You're from right. a thankful heart. David's soul is just bursting to praise the Lord here in this psalm. He's thrilled with the thoughts of his past. And David's thinking, who am I that God should love me? That God should save me? That God should use me? I can relate to that, can't you? Yeah, yeah, sure yeah. you can. David knew that he was unworthy. David felt above all men. He realized that he was an unworthy sinner. But God was merciful and God was gracious. And God gave David hope when he had no hope. And maybe you're there tonight. Maybe you've been there in recent days or years. But I want you to know, hey, join the chorus of God's yeah. people and yeah. praise your God. Amen. Tonight, praise your Lord. But especially this week, this, this season of Thanksgiving and on into the Christmas 
worship season. Turn to Psalm chapter 40. It's another psalm and uh, of praise. A psalm of David and Psalm 40. The Bible says in verses 1 through 3, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined his ear and he heard me. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and he established my going. He had put a song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He still got a song. Have you lost your song? Have you lost your praise? He said, Preacher, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what currently is going on in my life. You know, I might, I might not. As a shepherd, I'm, I'm somewhat aware of what some of you are going through. I pray for you. I, it hurts me. I care about what you're going through. But I'll tell you what, he knows yeah, all about yeah, that's it. Right. And he's worthy of our praise. Yes, sir. In verse 16, look at that verse. Psalm 40, verse 6. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually. Watch it. The Lord. Be magnified. Yeah. Hey, say it with me. The Lord be magnified. Say it one more time. The Lord be magnified. Amen. That word magnify is an interesting word. It means, obviously, magnify. What is that? To make great. To make bigger. To cause to grow. To swell. To nourish up. We ought to be praising the Lord in such a way that we make God big in the eyes of other people. Hey, listen. As grandparents... And parents, let's make God big in, in, in front of our children. Let's make God big in front of our family, right. our neighbors, our co-workers, lost family members, co acquaintances, certainly the saved. Yeah. Make God big. Yeah. Bless His holy name. Yeah. David says in Psalm 34, verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Eyes, if you come up here, whatever song the Lord has on your heart at this time, be sensitive to the Spirit. I want them to sing a praise song, whatever they choose. But read that again. With, listen to that again. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. But listen to the next word. At all times. Yeah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. Not just every once in a while. Right. Not when I feel like God's been good. Right. We say, look, uh, well, God had not been very good to me lately. What are you talking about? Amen. Right. Come on. God is good to you every day. Every Amen. day you wake up. Amen. Amen. Listen, forget. Every day you have a job. Every Amen. day you have income. Amen. Every day you have a roof over your head. Amen. 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 Every day you wake up and you look at that, that, that wife of yours, that husband of yours, those precious babies, those grandchildren. Amen. Every time you come to the house right. of God and see your brothers and Thank sisters God. in the Lord, Amen. you ought to praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to be a praising people. I want to move on to another point, but I want them to put an exclamation mark on what I just preached. And I don't know what's on their heart. I didn't tell them what to say. You sing, I'm sure it'll be a blessing. We'll come back to our well, you, you have to uh, just praise him, praise him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, crown and crown, prophet and priest and king. <laughs>
Amen. So, uh, here's what I want to do next. Something different. It's not normal just sermon. It's not, not normal service. Something a little different. I, I want to praise the Lord. I, I want a few to stand up and express your praise for God for saving your soul. Anybody want to? And I can't take everybody. Now, don't dry up on me. <laughs> if God saved you. Don't be afraid to share it. Now, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take them real quick and real short. Here's some rules. Don't complain. <laughs> Don't tell everybody what a bad time you're having. Don't tell them about how you got a back pain. You got a back pain. You got a headache. No, no, that's not praising the Lord. Don't go. Don't even go in that direction. Let's praise the Lord for our Savior, for our salvation. Amen. And we'll try to get a few in here. We can't do a lot, but and here's what I want you to do. Everyone that gets involved, I want you to start. Your words will be, "The Lord be magnified," and you'll tell us why. That's why I want you to do it. And when you're done, I want you to say, the Lord be magnified. Okay, it's not hard. Start out with, the Lord be magnified, tell us why, and then you finish with, the Lord be magnified. And listen, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't be timid here. Men, women, children, let's praise the Lord. We're not going to be here real fast, long. I'm going to move on. i got more points. Okay? Matt, go ahead. The Lord be magnified, saving me, and being able to get my daughter saved, and answering prayers time in this church. Uh, it's definitely been a blessing. So thank you all. Special thanks to the Lord. The Lord be magnified. Amen. Amen. That young. Thank you. Next. Yes, Aaron. Nice and loud, please. The Lord be magnified. He takes care of me, provides. He, he provides for me uh, every day. Even when I don't know uh, where the provision is coming from, he does. The Lord be magnified. Very good. Next. Come on. Hop up. Hop. Just hop up. I'm, yeah, the go ahead. Lord be magnified. He could take a total mess and form it into something beautiful. The Lord be magnified. One, one. Next, next. Don't be timid. Come on, praise your, praise your God. Amen. Go ahead. The Lord Tim. be magnified. May of 1983, He reached down and drew me unto Himself and saved my soul. The Lord be magnified. Amen. 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 Susie. The Lord be magnified. I'm so glad that I have a wonderful husband like Ron that's taken me through a lot of stuff in my family. The Lord be magnified. Amen. 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 Sister Betty, go ahead. I am so thankful. <laughs> <laughs> so thankful that he was patient for me my salvation. He didn't go the clay away. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Come on. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, Marcella. I pray to the Lord for being my Savior. Amen. 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 Every day. Amen. Now say these words. The Lord be magnified. Can you hear me? Okay, we'll move on. Somebody else. Yes, sister. The Lord be magnified. He saved me. He keeps me. He satisfies completely. The Lord be magnified. Amen. Amen. They're, that family's going through a lot. It's a lot. Magnify the Lord. Brother Rick is very, very sick. Pray for him. Yes, sister. The Lord be magnified. The Lord, um, I'm grateful that he saved my soul. And uh, just the way he takes care of me and brought me through our family. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise the Lord now. Yes, sir. The Lord be magnified, for he is Lord and Savior, and beside him there is no other. The Lord be magnified. Praise the Lord. Yes. yes. Go ahead, sis. The Lord be magnified just, just for just loving me and taking care of my family and supporting my spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Tico. All right, well, let's get back in God's Word. I gave you a chance now. <laughs> we, we might have some more on Tuesday, but you had your opportunity. But listen. I'm talking about a chorus of God's people right. praising the Lord. Amen. Hey, listen, stand up and say something for the Lord. And this is good here, but you know what would be great for you to do? When you're in the grocery line getting ready to pay for those oh, yeah. groceries, you ought, you ought to just say, praise the Lord. Amen. You go ahead and sing a song, whistle a tune. You'll be surprised at the people that look at you. They'll recognize those old hymns. That's right. And then you have an opportunity to witness. I challenge you to do that. In these coming holidays. Now look at Psalm 34, 3 through 5. Uh, we looked at this, but we're back to our point here. Psalm 34 and verse 3. We read the words, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This point is that I want to praise the Lord with tonight is a choir of encouragement and embellishment 
to have others join you in praise. Hey, listen, we're going to get with our family. Uh, Steve and Barb are coming in uh, tomorrow, and the grandchildren, and Joseph's coming over, and Patty, if she gets better, she'll be coming over. My brother will be over there. Uh, my brother needs the Lord. And we got some of our family getting together, obviously for this holiday. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have them all around the room. I'm going to say, tell me now, what do you want to praise the Lord for here before we have Thanksgiving? Amen. And it might be a little uncomfortable for a few of my relatives, you understand. <laughs> but that's good because you know what I'll do? I'll say, let me tell you what God did for me. Amen. And I will share with all those. They say, well, they'll say, Dad, we already have, that's okay. 31, 749, Roslyn, Garden City, Michigan, Amen. upstairs bedroom. That's where I got born again. Now, the next, tell me how you got saved. I'm going to do it with all my family members. Good. And I know there's going to be a few there that don't know the Lord, and maybe they'll just say, "Well, I don't, I just, I don't know what they're going to say." But maybe they'll get it. Yeah. Maybe they'll want it. Amen. Amen. We need to be a choir, encouraging and embellishing others to join us in our praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let's exalt His name together. We magnify the Lord together, as I said. Psalm 107, verse two: Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Amen. Who he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I was a goner. I was a goner. I was lost. I was on my way to hell. And by the yeah. grace of God, he saved my soul. Amen. And you too. Yeah. And it's amazing how we can, you know, uh, Joseph's planning on taking the family to the football game, to the Lions. I hope you pray for us. I, I, you know, when he first told me about taking the family to the Lion game, it was, oh, six, seven weeks ago, he made the plan. And, and I said, well, that'll be fun. And then... <laughs> they haven't won since 1957. That was the year, this is some of you think I'm older. That was the year I was born, okay? And I've been waiting for these lines. That's a different message, but we're going to probably go walking. And you know what people will do? They'll, they'll holler and they'll scream and they'll whistle and they'll yell and they'll take their towel. Their, we don't have a terrible towel. That's Pittsburgh. We, we don't have anything. We don't win. But, you know, everybody will shout and yell and scream and, you know, they'll get a lead and then they'll lose it in the last. They'll do it. Every time, they'll do it. But you know what? Some of you, and I'll be there, I'll sleep. Yeah, all right. They got a touchdown. Some of you, I can't get a holy grunt out of you right. for the Lord. You don't get excited in church, but you get excited at something. Else. I'm not scolding you. I'm just saying we need to be a choir Amen. of praise to our God. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. And uh, these are songs of praise, of course, uh, written by David. Now, all the songs are written by David, but many of them are written by David. Psalm 107, verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, <coughs> excuse me, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainteth in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. You see that? Yeah. God ever yeah. delivered you out of any of your distresses? Boy, yeah. Amen. Amen. We had dinner with this beautiful couple last night. And they were sharing with me how they were off the road for so many years because of Alan's health. And didn't know how they bills were going to get. They didn't know how they were going to be provided for. That was their ministry, music ministry. Evangelists preaching off the road. I won't go into it, but the medical bills have mounted up. And he shared with what God did. Ellen never worked. A, home, a, a woman that was at home raising her family all her life. The Lord provided a job for them, for her, just before he ever had his first heart attack. Not knowing, they both felt like, never had done it before. Both felt that this was something they needed to do. And then he had the heart attack and God provided. Yeah. And they talked last night about how good God has been. Amen. And listen, they're, they're in the choir. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. Hey. You've been through some distresses? Here's the point. You've been through them. Amen. They're not easy. I didn't say they were easy. I didn't say your heart wasn't broken. I didn't say it's still not. Not broken. Right. But God delivers and He delivers again. Amen. 
And he delivers his people out of their distresses. Don't we have a good God? Amen. Verse 7 talking about the people of God. And he led them forth by the right way. That they might go into a city of habitation. Oh, there it is. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of God. Listen, I feel that way tonight. Oh, that God's people would praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, that God's people would say something. And praise the Lord. Thirdly, he writes here in this psalm, verse 6, Psalm 34, verse 6, these words, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, saved him out of his troubles. And here we have a confession made of the experience of personal salvation. Again, I'm glad that Jesus saved me. I'm glad that he changed my life. And David writes, this poor man cried, now, he's not talking necessarily about physical crying here. He's talking in a spiritual sense of crying out to God yeah. for help in things that only God could do. Now, the text is talking about salvation. If someone's here tonight and you're not saved, listen, you cannot save yourself. Not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to His mercy, saved. Yes, for by grace you say through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Amen. Salvation is an operation of God. And that's what took place in my life. God opened me up, spiritually speaking, and He saved my soul. He changed my heart. He changed my life. He changed my wants and my dreams. And He gave me, He privileged me to be in His work. I'm the last, I'm the last, the last person that I would ever think God would ever call. But He did. And I bless His holy name. But all started with soul salvation. The grace of God. The goodness of God. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works. But according to his own purpose and grace. Which has given us in Christ Jesus. Before the world began. I'm glad God had a plan of salvation. I'm glad he chose his son. I'm glad Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. Yes. I'm glad he shed his blood to wash away all sin and death. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Mostly I'm glad that he washed away my sin and death right. and yes. saved my soul. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I can relate to David. This poor man cried. <laughs> means cry out. means ask. And the Lord heard him and saved, saved him out of all his troubles. David was saying, I was poor and needy and unable to help myself. David's talking about a personal experience. Hey, I remember praying to Jesus. Do you? Amen. David was talking about a personal request. I remember asking Jesus to forgive me of my sins. Come in my heart and save me. And here's the word, I'll never forget, and change my life. I remember that personal prayer to God. And then it was a calling unto the Lord. I remember asking the Lord to save me. I remember asking to forgive me. And I asked him to change my life, but I had no idea. <laughs> how much he's been changing me and changed my life and blessed me. You're looking at a blessed man. That's good. Oh, yeah. I am so blessed. So blessed. Amen, preacher. But listen, choir, you are too. Oh, yeah. You don't have the opportunity of getting up here like I do. Some of you would love to. So if I ask you right now, some of you do. But I get the opportunity to stand in this pulpit, stand in this pulpit for almost 29 years. That is such a blessing to my heart. God's been so good to me. Are you ready to praise the Lord? I want to ask some readers, and they're going to get up, and they're going to, they're going to do it like a preacher, <laughs> nice and loud. First one, Psalm 116, 1, nice and loud. I love the Lord because they have heard my voice and my supplication. Amen. Psalm 116, 2, who's got that? Because he has inclined his ear unto me, Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. You know that idea of inclining the ear is the meaning of a mother hearing her babe in the night. Oh, wow. Psalm 116, verse 4. Who's got that? Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Amen. Amen. David's writing about God's grace, about God's forgiveness, about God's help. Psalm 116, 12 and 13. Who's got that? Nice and loud. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. 
you hear that? Did you see that? Maybe some of you hear that. You need to take the cup of salvation. Quit playing games with your soul. Quit pretending that you're okay when you're not. So I've been in church all my life. Church doesn't save you, friend. Amen. Do you remember a time and a place that you were under conviction and you called out to God, Lord, forgive me. I don't know the words you use. It's not, it's not the words. We don't take a prayer and say, repeat after me these words and that makes you say, it comes out of your heart and you cried out to God and you realize, I'm a sinner, God. Please forgive me of my sin and save my soul and change my life. Quit Amen. playing church. Amen. Quit playing the religion game. Amen. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. I fear, I fear, I fear that there's many people that go to church every week and gone to church their whole life and they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah, sir. Take the cup of salvation. Amen. David says after that, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? What shall I render? What shall I give unto the Lord? He's not asking for money. He doesn't need your money. You know what he wants? He wants to save you. He, listen, you say, well, my soul belongs. No, your soul doesn't belong to you, friend. Amen. All souls are mine. Amen. He wants you to call out to him. Good. And save people, I want you to know this. He wants you to serve him and praise him. With all your heart and all your soul. I say most of the time, folks, we don't praise God with all our heart and all our soul. Just some of our heart. Some of our soul. Psalm 107, verse 32. Who's got that? Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of elders. In the assembly. See that? Uh, Psalm 111, verse 1. Who's got that? Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Whole heart in the assembly of the upright. Yeah. I, you know, I hope you're all upright. I hope you know the Lord. Yeah. So when pastor says, hey, anybody got a testimony? It ought not be pulling teeth. It right. ought not be, well, I don't know if I should say it. You say, big pastor, take me. Take me, pastor. I want to say something. Oh, I know I talk all the time, but let me, let me give another one. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 149, verse 1. God. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Amen. Oh, saints. Come on, guys. They have another song. I don't know what it is. It'll be good. Amen. And we'll finish up a few thoughts and we'll be done for that. Are you, are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Amen. Praise, Amen. Amen. praise is worthy. Yeah. Amen. Praise is worthy for our God. Amen. We should not hold it in. We and I'm not saying we ought to come unglued and have no order. God's not the God of disorder. God's the God of order. But we have opportunity. Praise His name. Okay. Don't complain. Don't bellyache. Praise His name. Don't look at what, oh, I'm going through a terrible thing. Yes, we all do. At some time, praise His name. Praise His name. They're going to sing a song. I'm going to give you a couple more points. And we're going to shut this thing down. But I hope, I hope you'll hear tonight that you need to start praising your God. Not Amen. only here, but if you can't do it here, God help us. Right, preacher. But out there. Amen. And sure. around our family. Say, so, well, I'll make a like Pastor, you were saying you're gonna you're gonna make people uncomfortable. No, 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 I'm gonna praise my God. If they're uncomfortable, I, I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. But it just might put a desire in their heart Good. to know God. Amen. Amen. We're coming up with excuses why you aren't gonna do it. Praise your God. In the assembly of the saints. But then when we get up there to a lost and dying world without Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and sing. We'll wrap.
of testing and attacks and dangers when Saul was jealous of him and sent his arrows flying. He wanted to kill David. God protected him. When Saul's spirit changed toward him, he chased him into the wilderness. David said, I'll not touch God's anointed. He was in the cave of Adullam and he could have took his life. He said, no, I won't touch God's anointed. Saul hounded him and chased him. Saul's armies chased him. They couldn't get him. Even so much as you remember in your Bible that he went to, Philisti to, to, to Philistine and he came into the camp of the Philistines and he played the role of the fool. He drooled. Remember all that in the Bible? Oh, yeah. And they thought he was a madman. God delivered him out of their hands. See, there were times where David was afraid. There were times when David thought he was a goner. But every time God intervened. How many times, maybe in your heart, you thought you were a goner or this is going in a bad direction. God delivered you. But there are times that God didn't allow things in our hearts and our lives. Real things, hard things to happen. But the Lord gives us confidence in those times. Even when sad times come, sorrow comes, loss comes. And I'll tell you what, God gave David this. He gave him a satisfied heart in the middle of his trial. Yeah. Verse 22 and we're done. David said, The Lord redeemeth the soul of the servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You know what David was? Through all his trials, through all his troubles, he never saw himself as desolate, alone. No matter what you go through, saying, you are never alone. We may feel like we're never alone. We're alone. I don't know what's ahead for me. You don't either. But I know my God will never leave me alone. Amen. Amen. I will never be desolate. He's real. Amen. 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 Our God loves us. Amen. Our God loves you. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I want to say something tonight. Go oh, taste and see Amen. that the Lord is good. <coughs> Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The preacher right now, just bitterness. Bitter taste in my mouth. Bitter taste of experience right now. But he's not done. Hey, no. right. I like what my preacher used to say years ago. Worst thing can happen to the saint of God is die and go to heaven. Amen. Worst thing. Yeah. Don't threaten me with death. <laughs> yeah. Because the Lord's there with us. Amen. Will I go through the valley of the shadow of death? Thou art with me. Amen? Yes. Let's bow our heads if we would. Brother Lewis, if you give us an invitation hymn to sing tonight. Let's bow our heads. Oh, in just a few days, some of you have already had maybe your family get together, and that's good. That's fine. It doesn't have to be on a certain date. Some of you maybe are meeting with your families here soon. It might be Monday night. It might be Tuesday, it might be Wednesday, it might be Thursday, regular holiday of Thanksgiving, it might be on Friday. I don't know when you get together. Somebody said, Preacher, we're not getting together. I'm alone. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, let me tell you something. You're never alone with the Lord. The saints, we need to look around us to see folks in our own church that maybe are hurting and, and include them in our fellowship, include them at our table, include them definitely in our prayers and our hugs and our concern. Amen. With all this go out of here and say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Witness for Jesus. Talk to a sinner that needs the Lord. Talk to somebody that maybe had gotten away from the Lord. Remind them how good God is to return to the Lord. Well, Pastor Williams preached a dynamic message this morning. The God of Jacob. When he went the other way, God was always there, but God was there when he came back. What a thought. He never changes. He's always the same. Lord, bless us now as we end this service. I pray, Lord, that you'd help them have hearts of praise. Maybe someone needs to come tonight and confess some sin so they can have praise in their heart. And Lord, not to me, but to you. Get their heart clean. Maybe someone needs to get saved. Help them to come. Lord, quit playing games with their soul. And get born again. Maybe somebody needs to come tonight. Just bow the knee and just thank you, Lord, for all the things that come to their heart and mind. Lord, do what you want to do in this service, but I want to say thank you. I love you. Thank you, Lord.
You're a great God. You're a wonderful sucker. You're a wonderful provider. And I love you. Lord, help us to worship you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's